รามรณามาปริโมเจสามีอิดามิปุญญามอาสวัคยาวะหังโอดูอิดามิปุญญามนิบาณัสปัจเจโอดูอิมานโอปุญญาบาคังสวัสดาณันดีมาสัพพิสัตตาสุขิดาหันดูวันนี้ปัญจอินทรียะซึ่งปัญจะเอสเอฟไฟอินทรียะหมายถึงควบคุมและควบคุมปัญจอินทรียะหมายถึงควบคุมและควบคุมของจิตใจ So we can say five mental faculties. <coughs> Those are sada, viriya, siddhi, samadhi, panya. Sada, faith or confidence. This is faith. Is a not ordinary faith. Strong and firm faith in the triple gems, <clears throat> especially in the technique of mindfulness meditation. Uriya, energy or effort. This also no ordinary uriya. As to <clears throat> vipassana meditation, mostly the omniscient Buddha use the word p a d a n a p a d a n a as v i r i y a v i r i y a is an ordinary one, ordinary effort. b a d a n a is a strong, strenuous effort. <clears throat> That's why when the Buddha teaches us the five factors of a, a meditator, a yogi, he used the word b a d a n i y a n g a b a d a n i y a n g a b a d a n i y a n g a is two words are compounded. b a d a n i y a a n g a a n g a is a factor. b a d a n a is a strenuous effort. i a is a person or a meditator. b a d a n i y a h e r e means. A person with a strenuous effort. <clears throat> Badani yanga means the factors, f 
five factors of a meditator with a strenuous effort. <clears throat> so here, and five mental faculties, also virya is not ordinary virya. It's, it's a bodhana, strong or strenuous virya. <coughs> <coughs> Sada Viriya Sati Mindfulness. This also no often on with such mindfulness. No poor mindfulness. Constant and continuous mindfulness. Then samadhi, concentration, deep concentration, panya, insight or uh, enlightenment, a wisdom. But it includes ordinary the some knowledge of some knowledge of dhamma or understanding <coughs> is also called the panya. So firm and strong faith, strenuous urea, strenuous effort. Constant and continuous mindfulness, deep concentration, and insight, enlightenment, or wisdom. These are the five mental faculties which a meditator must be endowed with. <coughs> Only these five mental faculties are sharp and strong and powerful. Meditator can achieve his goal, the cessation of suffering. And also, <clears throat> sada and panya, faith and insight or enlight uh, insight must be Bellies <clears throat> must be an imbalance. <coughs> Concentration and effort also must be kept in prevalence. I explained to you these things in, in the previous talks. <coughs> briefly. Now what I want to explain to you is <coughs> how a meditator <coughs> attain the insight, how the insight realizes Meta and mind or body play a mental phenomena. <coughs> when a meditator observes a precept or at least a five precept very well, his morality is purified. He has attained purification of morality, purification of a virtue, sila visuddhi. Purity of morality is a conducive 
to the deep concentration of a meditator. When sila morality is purified, <clears throat> meditator's mind is clear and sharp, so he can concentrate on any object of meditation very well. The purification of morality is the cause of deep concentration. That's why we need to observe the precepts <clears throat> when we are about to practice meditation any kind of a meditation, either samatha meditation or vipassana meditation. <clears throat> With the power of uh, purification of mind, uh, purification of morality, samatha meditators can attain either excess concentration or absorption concentration, upachyara samadhi or apana samadhi. Here, yeah, apana samadhi means a jhana. Jhana means a fixedness. <clears throat> when the mind is a world fixed to the object of meditation, it's called jhana. So, when the mind is completely absorbed into an object of meditation, this is also called, uh, called jhana or absorption. When we say absorption, the Pali word is apna. <clears throat> so, when we uh, when a Samatha meditator attains excessive concentration, Bachara Samadhi, which is also known as Nivahu Samadhi concentration, because uh, it's next to absorption concentration or jhana concentration. It means uh, jhana concentration is preceded by Upachara Samadhi, excess concentration. Only Samatha meditator <coughs> can attain Upachara Samadhi and uh, Apana Samadhi, excess concentration and absorption concentration. Vipassana meditator Inside meditator cannot attain either excess concentration or absorption concentration, but he attains momentary concentration, which is equal to Excessive concentration in samatha as to the uh, in order to overcome the hindrances. In samatha meditation, when the samatha meditator attains excessive concentration. His mind is purified from hindrances or defilements. Hindrances are of five kinds. As you know, the first one, sensual desire. The second, ill will or aversion. Anger or hatred. Then <clears throat> the third, sloth and topper, 
ธินามิดาตัวพูด restlessness and worry อุดจะก็กุจะ the fifth skeptical doubt about temple gems these are the hindrances if one of these are five hindrances and the meditator's mind he can concentrate on any object of med meditation suppose he has a v i s i o n in his mind that a v i s i o n hinders his concentration to arise the concentration cannot arise because of that a v i s i o n or ill will so this a v i s i o n or ill will is a hindrance one of the hind the five hindrances When the mind is well concentrated on the object of meditation, none of uh, these uh, five hindrances uh, <clears throat> cannot arise with the mind. So, concentrated mind overcome these uh, hindrances and uh, overwhelm these hindrances. We can say the concentrated mind suppresses these hindrances and not to arise in the mind. <clears throat> so the mind is purified from these hindrances and defilements. This purification of a mind. Is it attained by s a m a t h a meditation with the excess concentration or absorption concentration? But inside a meditator does not attain either excess concentration or absorption concentration. But he attains momentary concentration. But this momentary concentration has also ability to overcome these hindrances, hindrances to suppress these hindrances, not to arise in the mind. So. The subcommentary to v i s u d h i m a g a said, <clears throat> "Momentary concentration is equal to excessive concentration and samatha. When it is a, 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 it is a able to." Overcome these hindrances, or remove these hindrances, or suppress these hindrances. <clears throat> Though the momentary concentration has the same strength as absorption concentration and samatha, it's a not. Named as excessive concentration or absorption concentration. <clears throat> oh, sorry. Momentary con concentration has the same strength as excessive concentration u b a c h a r a s m a r i but it's not named as excessive because excess excessive u b a c h a r a The name u b a c h a r a is given to the concentration 
and samatha meditation, not a new Vipassana meditation. That's why in a new Vipassana meditation, <clears throat> momentary concentration, kanika samadhi, the word kanika samadhi, it is used. But this is a momentary concentration. When it becomes continuous, constant, uninterrupted, it's a strength. It's able to remove all hindrances. <clears throat> so here, for samatha meditation, when a meditator has attained either bhajjara, excess concentration, or <coughs> absorption concentration, his mind is purified from all defilements, all hindrances. So he has attained the purification of a mind by means of either excess or absorption concentration. When the mind is purified from all hindrances, <coughs> defilements, it becomes calm, tranquil, serene. So this state of calmness, tranquility, is enjoined by Sumatha Meditator. So it's called jhana sukha, happiness of a jhana, or happiness attained through jhana concentration. <clears throat> but for vipassana meditation, vipassana meditation has to be mindful of whatever arises in his body and mind as it really occurs. He has many varieties of <coughs> mental states and physical processes as the object of meditation. Whatever arises in his mind or body is the object of meditation. He must observe it as it is. He doesn't take only a single object, like Samatha meditation. Samatha meditator takes only a single object and strives to concentrate the mind well on that object only. But the Vipassana meditation <coughs> does not take only a single object. He takes any mental state, any physical process that arises <coughs> at this moment as it is. Because the purpose of uh, Upasana meditation, inside meditation is to realize the true nature of mental states and physical process <coughs> as they really are. <coughs> so, Vipassana meditator needs some degree of a deep concentration, but he doesn't need very deep concentration. If his concentration is too deep, <coughs> there won't arise any insight with that deep, very deep concentration. Then he won't be able to realize any mental or physical phenomena. <clears throat> 
but he needs some degree of a concentration which can be attained by being aware of each mental state of physical process that arises at this mo from moment to moment. <clears throat> So, is my stay with a mental state for some moment. When that mental state has disappeared, his mind takes another object of a physical phenomenon or mental state which arises arising at that moment. Then it, the mind stay with that object for a moment. In this way, the inside meditator's mind stays with an object momentarily, but <clears throat> it takes one object after another. So his concentration becomes continuous, uninterrupted. That continuous and uninterrupted concentration is able to remove all hindrances and defilement. <clears throat> so by means of this momentary concentration, Vipassana meditator, inside meditator, Attains the purification of a mind, jitta visuddhi. When the mind is purified to a large extent, there arises an insight that penetrates into the true nature of bodily and mental phenomena. From the moment Vipassana meditator attains the purification of a mind by means of <coughs> powerful momentary concentration, he has been realizing <coughs> the true nature of mental states and physical process which are observed. <clears throat> then here with purification of a mind Vipassana meditator realizes <clears throat> the intrinsic nature of mental and physical phenomena in two aspects One is uh, the aspect of sabhava lakna, specific characteristics or individual characteristics. The other is the aspect of samanya lakna, common or general characteristics. Sabhava lakna is specific or individual characteristics. Samanya lakana is a common or general characteristics. In the first two stages of inside knowledge, uh, Meditida realizes uh, the specific characteristics of a body mind process, bodily and mental phenomena. From the third stage of stage of uh, insight, he realizes <clears throat> both specific characteristics and general characteristics of a bodily and mental phenomena. 
he has specific characteristics. <clears throat> Belongs to each individual mental states or physical unit or material unit. In other words, each mental state has its own specific or individual characteristics. Each physical process has also its own specific or individual characteristics. <coughs> Most of the time when we practice vipassana meditation <coughs> according to Mahasadipatthana Sutra, <coughs> we have to begin with the physical phenomena, material phenomena, such as rising movement and falling movement of the abdomen, or <coughs> sitting posture and touching sensation, or in breathing and out breathing. In the course of our, our um, Vipassana meditation, we have to be mindful of uh, the most prominent object, either mental states or physical process. Physical phenomena is more prominent than mental states. So we have to begin with the physical phenomena. And most of the time we have to be aware of uh, physical processes. <clears throat> so this is a physical process uh, has uh, it is a composed of mainly the four primary elements <clears throat> the four primary elements those are, as you know, between the two earth element, avoda to water element, dejo da to fire element, wire da to air element. <clears throat> Each of these uh, four primary elements has uh, their specific or individual characteristics, which must be thoroughly realized by a meditator when his mind is purified from hindrances or when he has attained the purification of a mind. <clears throat> so, but we do to earth element. Though we say the word earth, it, it doesn't refer to earth itself. It, it refers to its uh, characteristics. The characteristics of uh, earth elements is uh, hardness and softness. <coughs> hardness and softness is uh, the characteristics, the specific or uh, individual characteristics of uh, earth element. It doesn't belong to any other primary material element or any other mental states. So this hardness and softness is called the specific or individual characteristic of our other element. <clears throat> then Abodadu, water element. Here also, <coughs> we 
do not mean <coughs> earth itself. We mean that it's the characteristics that says fluidity and cohesion or trickling. Trickling or fluidity or cohesion is the specific or individual characteristic of water element of water too. <coughs> then Tejoda to fire element. <coughs> Though we say fire, the word fire doesn't refer to fire itself. It refers to its characteristics. The characteristics of a fire element or temperature is a heat and cold, heat and cold. So fire element has the characteristics of heat and cold. It's a specific or individual characteristics. Then why or that do when or air element has the characteristics of movements, motion, vibration, supporting. <clears throat> if you experience it and you are meditative practice movements or motion or vibration or supporting nature you realize uh, you are experiencing what your dad do when no air element realizing it's a specific <coughs> a general characteristic there's the movement or motion or vibration then Mentally, mental states. When do we say mental states? According to Buddhist Abhidhamma philosophy, <clears throat> mental states include all the consciousness and its mental concomitant, concomitants. So according to Buddhist philosophy, we have to divide mental state into two parts. One is uh, consciousness, the other is mental concomitants or mental associates. The consciousness, um, just know the object, that's all. It doesn't feel it pleasant or unpleasant, good or bad. It doesn't perceive the memorized state. It doesn't have any desire for it. It doesn't grasp it. According to Buddhist philosophy, the consciousness just know the object, that's all. So, the scripture said, Aramana vijyanana lakkanan cheta. Cheta means consciousness. Aramana means the object. Vijyanana means cognizing. Lakkana means the characteristic. So, Aramana vijyanana lakkana cheta means Consciousness has the characteristics of cognizing an object. It cognizes the object when the it has contact with the object. Just cognize, cognizes the object. It doesn't do any more. When the consciousness cognizes uh, the object, then 
if it doesn't if it as soon as it cognizes the object it passes away but when <coughs> the cognize the object doesn't disappear another consciousness arises and then it just sort of passes away but this organization has their concomitants that arise together with them. They are called Jedasika. <coughs> Jedasika, mental concomitants or mental associates. So when a consciousness arises and cognizes an object, then there is a contact between consciousness and the object. There is a feeling, either pleasant or unpleasant or unneutral, about the object. There is a perception one of mental states perceives or memorizes the object. There's a, a mental state which pay attention to the object. It's called manasikara, attention. There's a mental state a psychic force, Jivitendriya. These mental states arise together with the consciousness when it cognizes an object. So, when a meditator, say, the sea, a visible thing is a car or a flower. Then the consciousness cognizes the flower as the object, but it doesn't know it's a flower. It just knows it's an object, that's all. But there are mental concomitants here, as I told you. Perception, contact, feeling or sensation, attention, psychic force, and so on. When meditator does not note seeing, 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 then the consciousness, together with its uh, mental concomitants, takes the object repeatedly and stay with it, um, but uh, rising and passing away, one after another. Then, when it stayed, say it about two or three seconds, Consciousness recognizes the object. Then there's a contact. Then one of mental factor or mental concomitants feels pleasant or unpleasant about the flower. Say, feel it pleasant. <clears throat> then attention, manasikara, leads the consciousness together with its mental concomitants to the object repeatedly. Then there's uh, one mental factor or mental concomitant. When these mental concomitants and consciousness takes this object uh, such a long time, then the consciousness together with this concentration becomes concentrated on the flower to a certain extent. That's called one-pointedness, ikakta. This is a, a, a sort of a constant, weak concentration. 
then the the feeling the sensation feels pleasant about the object because of that pleasant feeling or sensation there comes another mental state a mental concomitant desire when the desire is not noted as desire 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 then desire will become more and more powerful then it changes into grasping we call it a upadana grasping here means it grabs grasp the flower it doesn't let it go so in this way desire or grasping mental defilement arises dependent on the seeing consciousness the consciousness about seeing the flower and some commentary or commentary why does this mental defilement arise why do this men- mental defilement arise because the consciousness together with its mental concomitants stay with the object for some time say for uh, two or three seconds or five seconds or ten seconds if it doesn't <clears throat> have time enough to stay with the object they have won't arise any desire any defilement that's why the meditator has to observe seeing 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 when he sees the very beautiful flowers seeing 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 observing the consciousness of a seeing of the flower when the note in my that notes the consciousness for seeing the consciousness for seeing arises and then passes away after its a its disappearance then the note in my comes to rise when the note in my becomes uh, continuous and strong enough then consciousness of a seeing has an a time enough to stay with the object <clears throat> for some time then the the feeling or sensation doesn't feel pleasant or unpleasant about the object then when there is no pleasant sensation no unpleasant sensation there won't arise any desire or aversion regarding this flower then the defilement has been removed through insight knowledge together with mindfulness and concentration that's why we have to observe whatever we see as a see and see whatever we hear we have to observe hearing 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 whatever we smell we have to observe it smelling smelling whatever we have to we taste tasting tasting or uh, eating eating chewing chewing or sweet sweet sour or sour whatever we touch we have to observe the touching touching hardness and softness whatever we think about noting thinking thinking and so on. the note in my cuts the consciousness of us here and so on 
for a moment, for the split of a second. Then the consciousness of a seeing or hearing cannot be continuous. When they are not continuous, they become weak. Then gradually, when the nautil mind becomes stronger and stronger, it takes, it notes it continuously, constantly, uninterruptedly. Then it's a, it becomes a more powerful, then it overwhelms the consciousness of a seeing. Then the consciousness stops, it disappears. They have not arisen. There doesn't arise any mental defilement, either desire, aversion, or jealousy, or anything. That's why we have to observe it. Here, when we know to see him, see him, see him, see him, sometimes we know the specific characteristic of uh, Cognizing the object. This is just knowing the object. This is just cognizing the object. We come to realize this is realization of a specific or individual characteristic of a consciousness jitta. But it has 52 mental concomitants. <clears throat> that arise together with together with it uh, depending on the object. Then here what I want to tell you is um, in Buddhist Abhidhamma the mind or uh, the mental states includes both the consciousness and its mental concomitants. When you say mental states, or when you say mind, <clears throat> out of the two types of a mentality, the consciousness has the characteristic specific or individual characteristics of a cognizing the object. The desire, craving, attachment or lover has the characteristic of a clinging to the object. Dosa, anger, hatred or aversion has the specific characteristic of a rudeness. In this way, when you, we observe the anger that arises at this moment, we come to realize the rudeness of the anger as a characteristic. When we observe the desire, 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 or craving, craving, attachment, attachment, attachment. We come to realize it's a clinging the object. It doesn't let it go. Here we come to realize the specific characteristics or individual characteristics of desire, craving, or attachment. That's why we have to observe whatever mental state arises <coughs> at this moment as it is. In the same way, as to physical phenomena, when we observe the rising and falling movement of the abdomen, when we observe lifting, pushing, dropping of the foot, when we observe the stretching movement of the hand or bending movement of the hand. When our concentration is good enough, we come to realize 
the specific or individual characteristic of a wind or air element. When we are able to realize the specific or individual characteristic of a mental or physical phenomena very clearly, we don't take that phenomenon to be a man or a woman, a person or a being itself or a soul. Because uh, we are realizing the characteristics of mental states of physical process, we judge they are neither a man nor a person. What's the the natural process of a mental and physical phenomena. Yes, today in heaven, tomorrow we will continue this, how a meditator realizes <clears throat> the specific and general characteristic of these mental and physical phenomena, nama and rupa, but not tomorrow. <laughs> Which day? Day after tomorrow, Monday. <coughs> May all of you rightly understand how you should practice your Vipassana meditation. Try your best and attain the cessation of suffering. <coughs> 